Okay, in this video we're just going to be solving for uh, free surface effect using the GGO formula. And we're going to be doing uh, these few problems that we did in class. I'm just going to go ahead and do them again here uh, online. So first of all, the formula we're going to use for free surface effect is, okay, GGO equals R L breadth, okay, over displacement 420, okay. So this is the specific gravity of the liquid divided by the specific gravity of the water the vessel's floating in. This is the length of the tank, and this is the breadth of the tank, how, how wide the tank is. We're going to cube that. That's a displacement of the vessel, okay, and uh, 420, which are um, uh, some, uh, just some factors there, uh, 35 feet cubed, uh, uh, 35 feet cubed per ton, and um, 12 that came from the eye. Anyway, let's not worry about that right now. We derived that someplace else. So, this first problem. So, these first few problems, one, two, three, four, you can see that the displacement is going to be the same uh, across all four of these problems. Actually, the length and the breadth of this tank will be constant for all problems, uh, except when we get down to the bottom. Um, and the thing that's going to be changing in the first few problems is, is the specific gravity of the cargo or the specific gravity of the vessels floating in. So we're going to see that impact. So for this problem here, uh, let's just go ahead and solve this first one. So R is going to be uh, 0.7 divided by 1.025. So 1.025 is the specific gravity of the seawater, and 0.7 is the specific gravity of the cargo. And the length of the tank is 50. Okay. And the breadth of the tank is 30, and that's going to be cubed. All right. And that's all going to be divided by the displacement, which is 13,000. And uh, that's going to be multiplied by 420. Okay, and when we do all that, uh, we should get a, a GGO of 0 0.17 feet up. So that's what you should get when you do that. Okay, so now let's do this one here. All right, so let's see here. We're going to use that same formula. So let's see. R, we're a vessel in seawater with freshwater ballast. Well, freshwater has a specific gravity of 1.0 and the seawater is still 1.025, okay? And then all this other stuff is gonna be the same. 50, 30 cubed, all right? Divided by 13,000, okay, times 420. And when we do that, we get 0 0.24 feet up, okay? Um, All right, so actually, so what's happening here is, um, uh, yeah, so anyway, there we go. So let's do this problem now. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what is, uh, we're in seawater with seawater ballast. Well, that's 1.025 divided by 1.025, which becomes 1 times 50 times 30 cubed over 13,000 times 420. And when we do that, we should get a GGO 0.25 feet up. Okay, and these are all feet, by the way. All right. So, uh, very good. Let's do this uh, fourth one here. Uh, let's see, our specific gravity is 1.5. That's hypersalinated. Maybe you're in the med, uh, the med or something like that. 1.025. Remember that 1.025 is the average specific gravity of seawater. It can be more or less. Okay. Uh, times 50 times 30 cubed divided by still 13,000 times 420. And in that case, it is uh, 0 0.36 feet up. Okay, so you can see here we went from a specific gravity of 0.7 all the way up to a specific gravity of, of 0.15, and you can see that did have a little bit of effect on the on the free surface. We went from 0.17 to 0.36, which is about uh, point. I go was that that's uh, uh, 15, 30, yeah, so uh, 19 
0.19 feet. So uh, less than uh, less than two tenths of an inch, uh, two tenths of a foot. Okay, so uh, something around two inches. Okay, so that's very little impact. All right, our GGO was changed just by all these things were constant, but we changed the specific gravity of the liquid and we changed the GGO by two inches. Okay, so that's not a significant amount of change in the. Uh, 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 specific uh, in in the uh, height of the center of gravity, the virtual height of the center of gravity of the vessel. Okay, now, now what we're going to do is we're going to change. We were changing uh, um, specific gravity. You'll see now that we're going to be in seawater in seawater ballast the entire time. So R is going to be one for all these problems. And now we're going to start to change the um, uh, displacement. So let's do this problem now. Okay. So we've got uh, right, 1.025 divided by 1.025, which becomes 1 times 50 times 30 cubed divided by oh, 15,000 times 420. And when we do that one, uh, we should get a GGO of 0 0.21 feet. All right. Uh, now let's do this next problem. We're going to go to 20,000 tons. So I'm not going to write 1.025, 1.025. R is 1. So I'm just going to put 1 there. As a matter of fact, I could probably even just drop that. All right. Because 1 times anything is that, whatever that thing is. So I didn't really need to put that 1 in there at all. But I just put it in there as a placeholder. Uh, this is now 20,000. 20,000 tons times 420. And, okay, what do we got here? We got 0 0.16 feet up. So this is kind of interesting. What's happening? As the, um, as the displacement is increasing, okay, look, 15,000, everything was the same except for this variable here. 15,000, 20,000. Well, here, look, 0 0.21, 0 0.16. The free surface effect is decreasing. And the reason why is because this tank is becoming a smaller and smaller percentage of the overall uh, displacement of the vessel. Okay? So, uh, now we're going to start to put subdivisions in. So, th what's going on here is that, for instance, you have a tank here. All right? So, uh, this is a 30-foot tank. All right? So, I'll just kind of draw something here that might represent a 30-foot tank. All right? And that distance is 30 feet. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a subdivision down. And the subdivision is going to prevent the water, the surface of the water, from traveling from one side to the other. Now, the liquid can still move back and forth a little bit down here. There's a few holes down here in this subdivision. Okay. But anyway, uh, for the most part, that liquid is going to be, the surface of the liquid will be uh, stopped. So this is still a 30 foot tank with one subdivision. Well, let's see what happens now when we, put, when we go into the formula. It's really kind of like, two 15-foot tanks now, isn't it? And that's exactly what's going to happen. So we have our R value is 1, and our length is 50. Okay. Now, our breadth, our breadth now is 15 feet. So that's going to be 15 cubed. And our displacement is 20,000. And we still got to put that 420 in there. Okay. But the thing that we got to do now is we got to realize is that it's two 15-foot tanks. So we have to multiply this whole thing by two. Okay? And when we do that, uh, we're going to get a GGO of 0 0.04 feet. Okay? So this vessel and this vessel are the same. The only difference is, is that this one has got a division down the middle of that tank. So that th this one had a 30-foot tank. Okay, this one was 30 feet, just like all the previous ones have been. Okay, 30 feet. And now we've got two 15-foot tanks. And you can see that we decrease the free surface. Just by putting one subdivision in, we decrease the free surface effect by 75%. This is 25% of this. You can say that this is 75% less than that. Okay? So let's do another one here. Oh, this one's got uh, oh two subdivisions. All right, so if it's 30 foot across, and now we put two subdivisions, well, we're going to make three 10-foot tanks, right? 
So it'll be 10, 10, and 10. So we're going to have to multiply all that stuff by 3. Well, that's 1 times 50 times 15 cubed divided by 20,000 and 420. And when we do all that, uh, we will get a GGO of 0.2. 0 .0, uh, actually, it's a little bit less than this, but I rounded it up. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see what we've got. Uh, that was that one. Well, we got one more to go, I think. Let's see what this one is here. Oh, three subdivisions. All right, so if it's 30 feet, And now we're going to put one, two, three. What that boils down to is that we're now dividing it into 7.5 feet each one. Each one of these is 7.5. All right. So that means we're going to do four. Oh, oh, I made a mistake here. Oh, you see this right here? Oops, that should be 10. Okay, that should be 10. Let me get my eraser out and fix that. All right. Oh, I'm glad you did. You, you did. You catch that? All right. Let me just erase that because I can. All right. That was a little bit of a boo boo. All right. So this is ten. So you can see uh, that's a really easy mistake to make. Okay. Um, remember. Uh, uh, anyway, I put 15 in because that was the last problem, but if this problem was standing on its own, the mistake I might have made would be to put 30 in there, okay? But th those two subdivisions. So now I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to finish this problem. 1 times 50 times 7.5 cubed divided by 20,000 times, uh, times 420. And when we do that, we get 0. 0 0.01. And it's actually less than that, um, but uh, I rounded it up to two, uh, two significant uh, uh, digits. Okay. So, uh, that's uh, more or less the end of this. Remember that this, all these problems for, were for a rectangular tank. Okay. This formula that we've been using, this GGO formula, okay, that we've been using up here is for a rectangular tank. All right. Um, if we have irregular shaped tanks, we have to use the free surface constant. And by the way, let's look at this for a second. If you did all these problems with me, you're like, damn, man, I wrote these numbers over and over again. The 50, this 50, this 30, this 420. Okay. And then particularly for these problems down here where the, uh, um, uh, you know, so anyway, it turns out that all the terms except for displacement are pretty much can be gathered up into what's called a free surface constant. All right, if you're doing a, a, a run from one port to the other, it's always the same port, and you're always carrying the same cargo that always has a specific, the same specific gravity, this number will be constant. And the tank volume, the tank shape will always be constant, so this number will be constant, and this number will be constant, and that number will be constant. And the only thing that will really change will be your displacement. So in this case, what we could do is we could just multiply these terms together to get what's called the free surface constant, and then we can just divide it by the actual uh, displacement of the vessel to get our free surface effect. And uh, that's what we'll start doing for sure for um, uh, irregular shaped tanks, which, will, which is in another video. Thanks.